My role was uh, as a go-between, uh, as a leader of a project that was under the Department, uh, Department of Environmental Affairs, which, which is the core of the LTAS, the Long-Term Adaptation Scenarios process. And what we discovered fairly early on in, the, in that process was that the, uh, the DUCC was working, uh, had involved uh, South African Treasury in a, in, a, in, a, in a similar sort of a, uh, a project. So what we did was to combine uh, forces and to try to integrate the kind of information that we were producing with the kind of information that was being used in the Treasury work. Uh, and that allowed us to really get those two projects to gel and to uh, intercompare, especially with regard to their climate scenarios. So we, we explicitly compared the scenarios climate-wise that were coming out of um, the MIT process with the scenarios that were being produced by Southern African and South African climate scientists who were downscaling global models. Uh, and that really avoided the issue of coming up with very different, uh, uh, very different uh, scenarios and, and very different conclusions. So we made sure that we, we, were, we were working on, on, on similar sorts of scenarios. And it, it really helped to... Um, to, um, to get a coherent story together for, uh, for policymakers in South Africa. The country is really trying to take a, a long-term view of what it needs to do with regard to adaptation. We know that we face a warmer future that's uh, virtually dialed in. We are uncertain about what rainfall is going to do. We live in a very variable rainfall environment as it is. Um, and we know that rainfall variability drives our economy. Uh, so rainfall makes a difference to uh, especially how much water we have available and, and, and crop production. So uh, from a climate change perspective, we need to start thinking about especially how we invest our water resources into the future. So those sorts of concerns drove an, uh, an agenda of trying to understand particularly how the needs of different sectors would be affected by climate change and how we could put in place uh, policies, um, you know, frameworks for allowing different sectors to adapt to the expected projected changes in climate without falling over each other, getting in each other's way. So uh, we, we face potential uh, trade-offs in water allocation, say, between urban use and between agriculture. So if both of those different elements of, uh, of development uh, go off in a certain direction, they would come into quite severe competition for water, for example. So the LTAS is trying to look at those future um, synergies and uh, clashes in resource needs uh, and to trade them off against one, one another and look at what, what is the best way uh, forward for, for adaptation under, under a, a possibly water-constrained future. I think access into an international team that's cutting edge, um, exposure to techniques um, which cope with the levels of uncertainty that we currently have. So the MIT UNU team has got some neat techniques for uh, addressing uncertainty by looking at these probability density functions and seeing how those, uh, how those are changed uh, under climate change the impacts of mitigation on those. These are all really, really useful insights that uh, we've, we've taken on board here. Um, and you know, fundamentally, it's just valuable working with teams that have worked with other countries, that have learned from other countries, as, as you and you wider has done, and import some of that, uh, some of that knowledge and some of that know-how into South Africa has been extremely valuable.